Well, can you imagine, sitting right here in the Catholic TV living room is none other than the Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend, Indiana, Bishop John Darcy. Bishop, it's great to have I you here with Bob, us. Great to be with you. Oh, my gosh, it's a and pleasure. The, it really is. And the Frank McFarland Center, my dear classmate, I get emotional talking about it because he came to Indiana my first months there and helped us start a live television Sunday Mass in each of our major cities. Father Frank was a tremendous uh, guy and, and, a, and a visionary, obviously, and we wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for him. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you're the Bishop Emeritus of Fort Wayne South Bend, so you, you, you're kind of retired. I, I know that Bishop never really retires, but what's retirement like and what are your plans? Well, uh, and, uh, I'm learning what it's like. It's been less than a month. Uh, my new uh, successor came, Bishop Kevin Rhodes. Good man. Uh, a good man, a classmate of you, or at least in the seminary with you, about a month ago, and then I went to Washington for the um, March for Life, and then came to Boston for a few weeks to give him the freedom to get started. But um, I would say it's, it's a very s severe transition because 25 years, and the old concept of the bishop, you know, is you're married to the diocese. All right. It, it's your spouse. Sure. So... Many times you and I have worked with people who lose spouses, and we try to be sympathetic and understanding, even though we can never understand it perfectly. Now I understand it, because uh. you're, you're giving something that you loved. And rightly so, uh, prop, properly so, a young man comes in with energy, um, 25 years younger, and a new vision. But uh, it's also a beautiful time, because it's a time to treasure uh, having been a bishop, but a sense of loss, yeah, right. a sense of loss, but also um, looking forward to a, a time of more prayer, more reading, uh, hopefully learn Spanish, okay. and uh, hopefully like you, Bob, get fluent on the internet. There you are. It's my three goals. Learn Spanish, Spanish, although the new bishop is fluent in Spanish, but we have a lot of Mexican uh, Catholics oh, okay, that come up. Sure. Uh, get fluent on the internet, and most important one, Pray and read more. But I've got a, a retreat lined up for bishops in Michigan and Ohio. I've got a retreat lined up for priests and sisters. And the office I started here, the Office of Spiritual Development that my sister Anne now works in so, uh, so beautifully, I brought that out to the diocese. Oh, good. And so I have got about a half a dozen parish missions to speak at. And the priests are inviting me for penance services. And um, I, I'm looking forward to continuing priestly and Episcopal ministry. Well, like I said in the beginning, you, you can't retire. It's just no, not possible. No, no, no. I got to ask you, though, uh, you know, it, it must be very challenging to be a bishop in the church nowadays, is it? It is, um, but as I look back on it, it's, it's, every day was a joy. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, I mean, to, to, to be, to, to, for God to give you that, in your, to give you a diocese in your hands for all those years, a synonymous responsibility. Mm -hmm. What I cherish most is the working with priests, presbyteral council, vicars, talking these all with priests. I always found, and personnel board, always found priests at their very best. We have a group of them around the bishop talking about policy. And I never found priests want to do anything except what's best for the people. I mean, that was my joy over the mm -hmm. years that. I never heard in all these counsel, in all these um, consultations that you know are part of your life, I never once heard a priest say something that was selfish. It was always for the gospel. For the, so I, it, I had many challenges. We had the sex abuse cri crisis early on. Oh, sure. Yeah. A lot of it. Um, uh, but uh, I, I, I always believe very strongly in being very selective about who you... you, you um, invite uh, who you accept for the priesthood. Cardinal Ratzinger, who since has got another job, as you know, uh, said, I said to him, Your Eminence, I think this was one of the eliminate visits. I think that um, w when I'm retiring, or maybe afterwards, there's going to be a strong increase because we've been careful. I think that's pleasing to God. Okay. We've been careful. Mm -hmm. um, I think the priest is someone, and you want someone who would also make a good spouse, and a good father, mm -hmm. in other words, a willingness to make a gift of himself. And so if we stay with just those, and I did a pastoral letter on this for the New England bishops way back, if we stay for just those quality people, 
who would be good fathers and good spouses, God will, that's where he'll send us. Oh, yeah. if, we get if we have to get people who are maimed in one way or another, you're not doing them any favor if you ordain them. So the way to more priests, which we uh, need uh, so uh, well, is through ordaining just quality people. And Benedict said that in his visit to this country when he said, we have learned, he said, Bob, he said, we have learned that it's more important to have good priests than many priests. We need many too, but the way for many is just to ordain good ones. I have to ask you too, your, the motto that you chose for your episcopacy comes from one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 118, I believe, his yes. steadfast love endures forever. forever. Yeah. Why did you choose those words? What do they mean to you? <laughs> well, I think we always depend on God's love. And, uh, and in good times and bad times, I have a sense of loss at this time, but also d d depend on his love, that it's his will. Mm -hmm. And the and and reason I chose that, when I made a retreat for the episcopacy, uh, four of us ordained, two of us are left, Bishop Tom Foley, retired of Brooklyn, Emeritus, and myself, Tom Daly, rather, Tom Daly, well known oh, sure. in this diocese. I made a retreat up on the Hudson River. I had given a retreat up there for Dominican sisters. I said, that's a good place. So I got in my little red Volkswagen and drove up there. It was, uh, uh, it was filled with, with a sense of his love. You know, I, I had a sense of my own unworthiness, but it filled with a sense of his love. That's why I chose it. I had sense, such a sense that, that um, in those few days of retreat, of his love, I said, that, that, that's, uh, uh, and I always preach on God's love uh, as carrying us through, and that God's love is primary to ours, it's before us, and it's seen in the death and resurrection of his son. So it was so vivid to me during the time of the retreat that that's why I took it. Well, may his love carry you through many, many more years of fruitful ministry as a bishop. Thank you. And uh, it's been a pleasure having you back here in the Archdiocese and also here at the Monsignor Francis T. McFarland Television Center at the Catholic TV Network. Well, the congratulations on this beautiful place. The first time I've seen it, my dear sister Anne is here often to attend Mass. She is. But it's very, it's a very beautiful. And a congratulations, Father Bob, on this extraordinary ministry that, that uh, Pope Benedict has recently supported and Pope John Paul II also. You reach so many, and I participated in the Mass from the Basilica of the University of Notre Dame every Sunday, and that's a joy. And uh, you, 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 you are re literally preaching from the rooftops. Well, we're, we're glad to do it. We have fun doing it, and uh, we know it's God's work. So thanks very much, Bishop, for being with us, and we're going to go right back to more of This is the Day. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Bishop. Okay, that's great. Thank you. It's a yeah, pleasure. I think, I think we've pleasure. got it all in.